I've been sanding uh, the gear blanks for several days now and I've gotten bored so I'm, I'll get back to them but I'm going to um, work on a drilling operation. I, I had mentioned earlier that the gear blanks were, uh, the holes that were cut in them were slightly undersized. What I'm going to do now is put the correct size hole in, in here. Um, these gears um, that I'm working on need to be press fit, it's called an interference fit, onto a, a steel shaft. And this is a ground steel shaft, it's ground very precisely, it's, uh, it's a quarter inch in diameter. And the way you uh, set up for a, a press fit, you know, which has to be done with an arbor press with a lot of force, um, is you cut the hole one thousandth undersized, um, and then you just press it in, and once you do that, it's not going anywhere. Um, so, in order to set that up, first I've made my own milling plate for this. I do a lot of work where I'm working from the center of a port out, and a standard milling plate, which has holes typically on half inch centers, it's good for a lot of things, but um, having T-slots that just allow me to, you know, bring clamps in from uh, either side uh, are very good. Uh, this plate works out very, very well for, uh, for doing this kind of thing. I also made this. This is just a simple piece of half-inch steel that I've um, milled a taper or turned a taper onto. Um, but what I'm going to do is bring this down to find the center point. And you probably just saw that the gear slid into place here. When I get close, I begin jogging, you know, just a thousandth at a time until the gear doesn't move in any direction. And then I know I'm at dead center, and the um, I've got Mach 3 set up so it knows that this is the zero point. And now it's just a simple matter of clamping it down. I'm using little brass shims to protect the sanded um, gears. I had mentioned before that I thought I might have to cover these with. Um, contact paper, some, some other protective film, but for drilling, I did some experimenting and it's, it just isn't necessary I and mean, the drilling doesn't do any damage to the, uh, to the finish. So I just snug these down I think by now you can already see the advantage of this plate. I'm not restricted to where those half inch holes are. I was able to just move these clamps exactly where you wanted them. I'm just going to bring this up now so I can switch to a drill bit. Now, I'm using a letter D drill bit which is 0.246 inches in diameter which is what, four thousandths below a quarter, but it's in its three thousandths below where I need to be to get this interference fit. Um, so we'll start with a drill bit and then we'll proceed to a, to a ramer to cut the um, the final diameter. Now, I do use a little lubricant um, I'm going to bring the drill bit down to the zero point. This doesn't have to be measured precisely because my G-code is set up so that it, you know, it's going to go deeper than it has to. I've got the spindle set at 700 RPM. Um, so I have to nail zero the, the Z-axis in my in Mach 3. I'll just run this little G-code program. 
It's a standard uh, drill and peck cycle, and it's. Um, I mean, we're not working on speed here, we're looking for precision, so you know, this moves slowly, but it's um, and I'm clearing the uh, the swarf from the bit very gently so I don't scratch anything. You might have noticed I also have that uh, ABS backer be under this. You know, I, I made one for each gear set. Um, this process is also drilling through that backer. So I'll be needing that to be the right size for the next step. Now, I'm going to remove the drill bit and switch to a reamer. Uh, if you've never used ramers, they are um, they're quite long, actually. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But they're they're milled very precisely. This one is 0 0.2490 uh, inches in diameter, and you can buy them pretty much in. Um, well, actually, you can have them ground to any size that you need, but uh, they're stocked um, out to four decimal places, you know, ten, ten, tens of thousands um, in increments of five. So, um, you know, this is a 249, you could get a 2495 or a 2485, um, just get these for whatever For whatever project you're working on, they're easily found. Uh, again, I'm going to use some lubricant. Bring the uh, bring it down to very close to zero, just eye close. Um, reset my zero point and proceed. Now this again, the spindle is still at 750. They'll always squeak a little just as they enter the hole, but then it shouldn't make any more sound as it goes down. I am lowering the head at, at a feed rate of 0.75, which obviously is very slow. And when it gets to full depth, which includes going through the ABS, it will retract at a feed rate of 1, which again is very slow. It's retracting now. Uh, I'm told that the reason that these are so long is so that they do have some flex in them so that they can find the hole uh, and, and stay in the center of the hole. I mean, I, I've heard that. I don't. Uh, but it would seem that why else would you make it this long? Uh, that, that's the whole process. Um, of course, it has to be done in each gear, but this gear now has exactly. Uh, 0.249 um, <clears throat> diameter hole in it, and later it will press fit and, and then stay on a 0.250 inch shaft. 